Hey folks, Jonathan here. Uh, I want to do a little update, update on the car and what's been going on here. I've been really busy towing and we've had a lot of rain and I guess that tropical depression or storm or whatever it is that hit Florida, you know, put a bunch of rain on us. So anyway, uh, first off, uh, my four-door rollback. You know, when I first got this thing together and drove it, I heard a noise in the rear end and you, you know, when you accelerated, you could hear it roar a little bit. You let off of it, you could hear it roar. Uh, if you got a little happy medium, it was kind of quiet. So I knew there was some issues with it. And the pinion bearing was going out and it was leaking gear oil out the front. So I knew that it was, wasn't was long before, you know, it was, something's going to have to be addressed on it. So that's why I changed this rear. And what it was is I priced a rear end for this truck before I bought them three parts trucks. The rear end was $3,500. So that was sort of part of the motivating factor of buying the other trucks. So now we've, uh, Noah and I changed the rear end out this past weekend and uh, between rainstorms and, you know, kind of a, a rough ordeal getting it done because of it. But anyway, we changed it out and I'm not real happy with it because it's geared lower. Uh, we may do something about that later. I'm going to put up with it, but uh, I really didn't, I didn't need the power. I mean, it's, the truck's got plenty of power, but uh, so now I don't have quite as much top end. And uh, so, not sure what we're gonna do, but anyway, it's in there, it's it's doing great, you know, no problems, so that was taken care of. But uh, I'll show you a couple of the wrecks here. Here's one behind a, uh, behind my wrecker. I was lucky that the, uh, the state trooper, uh, really nice lady, uh, when I got this call, this was actually a customer request call instead of a rotation call, but uh, luckily she called after the dispatch, the Highway Patrol dispatch call, she called him to uh, let us know that it was uh, over an embankment and it was really over a pretty major embankment. So uh, luckily I jumped in the wrecker instead of the rollback because this would have been a, a rough one for the rollback. But I wish I'd have gotten some video, but I didn't. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're at a wreck and you're, you're working hard to get it done, you know, it's kind of hard to videotape. And, uh, when it went in, it went a long ways in. And of course, tore the front completely up. But uh, when it came out, I guess the exhaust had gotten caught on something. So uh, I actually ripped the exhaust all the way around and and just about pulled it out. But you know, where this car was, there was really nothing you could do. There was no way to, to get down even close to it. You can light my chain got hanging the exhaust up but that's to keep it from dragging the ground but uh cars totaled anyway so all right here's another one somebody ran a ran a stoplight and uh you know it's, we're talking about 55 mile an hour so when they crash they crash hard and they're probably doing 60 65 so pt cruiser and another one and there's more but and here's some more wrecks. This car hit this car. This one was actually a customer request. And then that one was a highway patrol rotation. So I ended up getting both of them the same wreck. We've done a little bit on the car, just playing around with it, trying to get it ready for Saturday, if it don't rain us out, hopefully. But uh, I did get the, uh, the braces on and I've got one of the lights on, uh, the cow light. And I'll have to get the other one on. And uh, you've seen the front. And I've got the carburetor off. I went ahead and after I done that fuel pump, I went ahead and took the carburetor apart, cleaned it really good. And we're working on a phenolic plate. And a phenolic plate is actually just something that don't transfer heat. Uh, because I, the carburetor, it actually runs through the exhaust manifold, the intake does. So uh, we're trying to keep the heat from transferring from the exhaust manifold into the carburetor and as long as it's running and there's air flowing through the venturi in the carburetor you don't have a heating issue uh, you know you it'll stay cold you can actually touch it but when you shut it off the heat starts transferring so that's what this plate is for this is a phenolic plate that i have made and i'm going to show you what i'm the material i made it out of and uh this is a uh, sort of a composite material. It's, it, what it is is they use 
usually some kind of a paper or, or a uh, fiberglass or, and they compress it together and it's got a resin in it but it's the same thing used for circuit boards as you can probably say uh, just a, this is a thicker uh, piece than what would normally be on a on a board but uh, but it, it don't transfer heat good if you, if, uh, if you was to take a torch and heat the back side of this you can actually touch the front side of it and it won't transfer it through real well and that's why we're using this and we're getting ready to do uh, we're going to redo the fuel line on this and hide the fuel try to hide the fuel filter on it and I will uh, I'm going to show you the sheet of phenolic plate I've got in here first show you something else you know I was thinking I showed everybody the front of this but I think I showed everybody the emblem but I didn't show anything else uh, UCT this is a uh, travelers and insurance uh, piece that was originally on this car and the kind of the, the funny thing is is I had assumed that that was for the insurance of the vehicle but I found out that that's not it's actually uh, a travelers insurance it was for door-to-door -door sales and they started in like 1888 and I, they're still in business and they insured traveling salesmen on horseback and and then after that I don't think they ever done car insurance so it makes you wonder about the history of the car maybe if a, a salesman owned it but uh, I put it back on uh, there was a little spot on the radiator where you can see they I think that's where they had it at so that's where I put it back at just cleaned it up a little bit and also I've got a uh, motor meter which it's a, a boys uh, put the hood down we can see the back side I wanted to be able to tell what the temperature was on it of course and uh, this is the senior model they used the senior on the big cars they used the junior on the smaller cars so I can actually see the red while I'm driving or while I'm sitting in the seat and I'll be able to know what the temperature is uh, I actually bought a set of wings for it too, but I didn't like them. I didn't like the looks of them. I didn't like the way they, they just didn't look right to me on here. So I took them back off and just put the, the motor meter on and uh, maybe I'll find a set that I'm happy with it one day, but I just didn't like them. So, all right. Anyway, here's our, uh, here's our phenolic plate that I've got. And this is the, uh, I don't know if it's what kind of material it is, but I do know that I was told by a good friend that the machine is not to breathe it and this is the stinkingest stuff I think I've ever machined in my life it's terrible it's uh the smoke rolled off of it and it's just it's just no fun to machine and uh I don't think I I really care to do any more machining on this stuff but I've got some more cleaning up to do on this but we're going to get it all straightened out and uh we'll get two gaskets made and hopefully that'll help but Anytime you need to uh, keep heat from transferring, you know, this is really the stuff to use. So, uh, and I, like I said, I didn't know I had any. I went down and, and found this in a, uh, where I store all my weird plastics and stuff. So, and I guess my hoard. But uh, anyway, we'll get this cleaned up and see if we can get it on. Okay, we've got our plate on. Made two new gaskets, top and bottom. So that's all finished up. Carburetor's on. Everything's hooked up except fuel line. I've got to figure out how I'm going to run it and try to hide that filter somewhere. And uh, I wanted to address another issue. I've had a lot of people ask about the wood or talk about the wood on this thing. Uh, this is the plans. Somebody has already replaced this piece. Now, the way this works is basically you've got chicken wire that goes in the center where this opening is. And uh, then you've got a layer of sort of a padding that goes on it. It wraps over and then we'll get stapled on and then you have your vinyl that goes over it and it pulls down and stretches and then you've got nail strips that go around now somebody has already replaced all this wood all the way down including under this plate so all that is taken care of now your main issue is okay first would be looks you know you want it rounded and, and looking right second would be holding the nails in of course probably a little bit more important to hold the nails in but this piece here is too far gone now the front piece has been replaced so I will be making this new piece which comes off unscrews from here up on both sides and then uh, the only other issue is going to be 
there's a piece that goes inside of here across the back and I'll show you from the inside it's just one strip that we can take out and remake and no, you can't see it very well anyway we'll take that out and remake it and then uh, that will be the biggest issue with the wood because all the wood on the doors the floor uh, I've got the front floorboard back in and a little sandy here it's a bad part about this but uh, all the floors are really good all the you know the doors all the wood in the doors there's no issues there uh, we're not going to replace any more than we have to uh, you know some of this I might have to play with a little bit uh, but most of it's in really good shape and you know with in current times because they didn't have the kind of chemicals and stuff we have now but you know some of the glues and stuff but you know pieces like this where this is higher this is going to have to be worked with this piece is coming out it's going to, have to be worked with a little cracking it's not rotted it's just really dry but I'm not too concerned about that I know we've got one board here that is swooped down it warped it's warped a little bit so we'll probably pull it out and replace it we've got some little pieces to fix you know on the top uh, nothing real major uh, most all this wood is really in good shape I, I, you know I look forward to doing this stuff there's small pieces that go here that are actually missing so you know we'll have to make some strips for it and uh, you know sometimes you get bored with doing the same old kind of stuff so when something like this comes up it's kind of you know it's it's not a bad bad deal for me I, I kind of enjoy doing stuff like that sometimes and uh, I think we can get it straightened out and we're gonna do it all ourselves I'll do it on video and uh, we'll probably put this thing out in the Sun because we've got to be able to stretch this and then of course do our nail strips and uh, I think we can I think we can handle it especially you know with with new age tools we can stretch it and pop some staples in it I've got an air stapler and we'll pop some staples in it and then sort of put our nail strips over that and as, as long as we don't stretch it so hard where it's trying to pull back but uh, yeah I really I really think it uh, I mean it's gonna be a job and it may not come out 100% perfect but you know it is what it is and you know it's mine and, and I want I just want to do it myself uh, I did uh, bolt the rearview mirror in as you can see it's a gold tent kind of a uh, a different setup there and then uh, got my wiper motor up in there the vacuum uh, there's one in that it broke off uh, there's one on eBay they're not cheap because this is a really early style uh, as for the interior I'm, I'm still working on the sewing machine deal the one I found that I wanted got sold I found another one it got sold and now I found another one uh, my problem is is they're not relatively close so I've got to have time to go get them and I can't just run and leave like most normal people you know even in the evenings or whatever being on call 24 7 it's kind of rough so I'm trying to get a, a sewing machine lined up and like I said I want an old singer uh, and I think everything will be fine uh, you can see this is prime but I'll show you one of them over here how it's painted <clears throat> I think it's the inside of this one yeah you can see just the black and that's probably what that'll end up being uh, I don't think any I don't know if any fabric went over this or not I've got the garnish molding pieces they're not really garnish moldings because garnish molding goes all the way around but they're the steel pieces that go here and you know your door panel goes from here down and I don't think it's going to be too hard to do uh, the chains hooked up on this one uh, spring-loaded on the end someone's done some repairs over there we're gonna go through that and make sure it's right and, and gonna hold up good and we've got to get the chain hooked up for that door uh, but you know the doors do open and close good they're you know they line up pretty good they're they're not terrible 
uh, you know, you're dealing with a car that's you know, half wood and half steel. So, uh, and here's the other side. As you can see, nails are not going to hold in there. So, and like I said, someone's replaced all that. So, you know, they've they've done some to it. So, you know, I don't like I said, I don't have any complaints on it. Really, really nice car. A lot nicer than what uh, what it could have been. You know, buying it sort of sight unseen. I guess pictures is all that I had. So. Okay, folks. The same day, about eight hours later. That's how long it took me to get this done because I had to keep leaving for tows. So, uh, been really busy towing, and not just wrecks. It's been a lot of breakdowns, customer tows. Okay, folks. It's Friday, and if it don't totally rain us out, I'll be at that show tomorrow in Sanford, North Carolina. Uh, anybody wants to come, I don't think you'll uh, be able to miss who I am anyway, but uh, I may do some live streaming from there, or try to do some live streaming from there on my phone if uh, if it's got good signal. I had to add my American flags on, and I did put the uh, the emblem on the bumper. That's the Balloon Bumper Company. Balloon Bumpers, where is that at? I think it's Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Uh, got my cow lights on and got it running good I'm gonna do a quick start up here on it and uh, let me see I'm trying to think of anything else I done. I didn't do a lot but I mean I I haven't had any time I really haven't and uh, I've been doing really nothing but towing but let me uh, let me get you set up here and we'll see if we can do a cold start on it because it hasn't been started at all it's as cold as can be so, all right Okay, I always keep my fuel turned off. I don't like to take any chances. Even though I, I think I've got everything straightened out on it. Starting and running pretty good. I haven't adjusted the valves or anything, but I think it'll be just fine. And, uh, and I think uh, Junior's going to come to the show tomorrow also. So, so uh, he's going to take his 55 up there. So, we'll see you there. Appreciate everybody watching. Till next time. Bye.